This video is proudly sponsored by New Type. Tools, accessories, model kits, these guys have it. Hop over to NewTypesHQ.com and use promo code UTALKABLEDER for 10% off on your next purchase. Hey, what's going on dudes and dudettes? Welcome back to another exciting build from the good folks from Bandai Japan. So why don't we get started with the 148 scale mega size RX-78-2 Gundam. And without further ado, let's get to it. I know there's a handful of you dudes and dudes that are asking yourself, why, Otaku Builder, are you building another RX-78-2 Gundam? Why? Because I'm celebrating the 40th anniversary for the Gundam franchise as a whole, not the Gundam individually, because... Back with a really cool build from the folks from Bendai, and that's none other than the RX-78-2 Gundam, celebrating the 30th anniversary for the franchise. Yeah, apparently I was like five years off celebrating the wrong Gundam franchise. I make mistakes, no one's perfect, but I got the next best thing to come. So today, I am actually going to be tackling my very first Mega Size Gundam. Now, I was a bit hesitant to build this Mega Size back in the day because I thought it was kind of cheap. Nothing really special at all, but after building one Gundam after another, there's come a point in time where you have to really brought out your palette. And this was something I really wanted to check out. Not only that this master grade slash perfect grade doesn't have an inner frame, but this not only has excellent amount of great decals, an assortment of tools in which you can actually use to take the pieces out, but more importantly, this kit is a lot of fun to assemble. So, what's inside the box? Right out the bat, you are immediately introduced by two instruction manuals. On the far left, gives you the instruction manual on the main Gundam itself. Now, one would think you're gonna get the sticker decals, you're gonna need some specific snippers, maybe some super glue. That is not the case for this Gundam. In fact, this Gundam comes with its own specific tools in which you can actually snap off the runners very easily. Now, if you dudes don't feel up to actually using this tool, that's totally fine. Just get yourself a good pair of snippers and you'll be just fine. Now, this is where I tip my hat to Bendai for actually thinking outside the box for once. They gave you this beautifully well thought out instruction about how to cut the pieces out, how to apply the water slide decals, and how to actually paint the RX-70-2 Gundam correctly. That is beautiful. Good on you, Bendai. Please make more of these for the next model kits. And now for the main hors d'oeuvres, you got the classic red and orange pieces with water slide decals, excellent, and the shield to boot. Now as for the additional runners, you get your classic pre-molded hands and the backpack unit, but most importantly, you get the classic red, blue, and white armor pieces. But the main focus for this build is to build that classic Gundam that exists seven years ago in Japan. I didn't have the chance to see it back then, but I hope I can actually recreate it.
Now the next two areas that are going to be extremely crucial for this Gundam is the actual backpack unit and the exhaust port in front of the Gundam. Now the backpack unit, very easy, drill out the circles and you're done. Now the exhaust port in front of the Gundam is where things got a bit tricky because my original plan was to drill each individual hole, as you can clearly see here, I did, and it didn't look really good. So the next best step was to actually dribble out the whole entire area in which I can actually put a wire mesh that will look not only way more professional and way more cleaner, but it will actually illuminate the right kind of light that I want to project out of the exhaust port. Now this next bit may look a little confusing, so I'll try my best to explain what I'm doing. So the Gundam shoulder has like these really cool LED lights in which they look really cool. Instead of actually hollowing out the area and then putting a clear plastic through it, I felt that I can actually pull off that exact same effect if I block those main areas. So what I basically mean by that is actually covering up those areas with the actual Tamiya masking tape, then cutting them down to the shape to which they're actually going to look like on the actual promotional box art. And then, if it's done correctly, I can actually project a small LED light through it with a specific color. Now the bottom areas are going to be a nice cool white, while the shoulders individually are going to be a bright red and a bright green. So this effect will work perfectly fine. So to do this method correctly, all you have to do is apply a black primer onto the surface first. Once that sets and dries for about literally a minute, then you can put your classic gray primer over it and do your pre-shadowing. Once that's done, you should be good to go.
to your drum And I'm blinded by the sunshine in your eyes Not thinking twice in my this dumb Although I know you're all I want How could I crave something so bad? My sweaty palms reveal a warning I should hear You know too well I need you close Can't help myself Try to stop the fight under your spell Can't help
right, we are literally 95% done with this Gundam. Now I need to do the one thing I actually really enjoy, and that is actually applying the water slide decals, but these are a little bit on the light side, so I took the liberty of buying some more on my own free time, but that is where the magic ends, because there are tons of inconsistencies with these water slide decals. They are not the best quality, but on top of that, there are tons of inconsistencies of size and scale. And as you can clearly see here, these two pieces are not the same size, which means I'm only going to use like 30 to maybe 20% of these decals and just rock out what really works and what doesn't work. But on top of that, we are literally at the end of this video, and I want to share with you dudes and dudettes my thoughts and impressions about this model kit, which is very, very light on the bad and lots of positives. But most importantly, I want to share with you guys some little life lessons when it comes to actually selling these Gundams if you choose to do so in the future. So let's talk about the bad. So for those purists out there that actually love to do all kinds of interframe detail to the actual Gundam, there is no interframe at all. The closest thing you're going to get to an interframe is the ankles, wrist, knees, and fingers, and the neck, and some places inside the head. Nothing crazy, nothing over the top, it is bare bones, especially for the price that you're paying for for this Gundam. Third and finally, there is no gimmick. There is no specific LED piping to illuminate the eyes. There is no manipulating fingers. But most importantly, you're not going to be able to pull off any kind of dynamic poses. That is not the purpose of this Gundam. It is a celebration of the Gundam franchise as a whole to really show respect and love for the granddaddy Gundam of them all that started it. Because there are two factors that are going on here. One, it's a marketing thing, so they gotta sell what they can for the Granddaddy Gundam. But most importantly, if I lived in Japan seven years ago, and I went to the Gundam base, and I saw the actual statue of the RX-78-2 Gundam, I would immediately buy a model kit right there and then. Because I want to show my love and respect to the engineers, the artists, the animators, the musicians that brought this franchise to life back in the day. And if there is some way I can actually show it, this is my interpretation of it. And if someday I have little kids and they see that uh, Grandpa Otaku, what, what Gundam is that? Oh, that is the RX-78-2 Gundam. Grandpa's favorite. You know, you're passing on the torch, sharing the legacy. And I think that's what this model kit's all about, preserving it. Now, as for the goods, this kit was awesome. I didn't have to worry about no inner frame pieces or losing individual little tiny pieces. It's just, if you just built this kit, you'll be done within a day. If you paint it, four to three days tops. Custom panel lining and actually LED installation, three to four weeks, but this was a passion project. I love all the videos that were really shown for this RX Gundam on YouTube. And, uh, and for those who actually took the time to actually record it back in the day and gave me plenty of references, I want to say thank you all so much. You guys were incredibly helpful. But um, there's nothing else I can really say is just, if you like it, I know I did. And it's a must buy. I might actually build more Mega Size Gundams in the future. And now for the really important part of this video, and that's when it comes to actually selling Gundam model kits to strangers. So I'm not going to get into the specifics, I have the story on my Instagram page if you guys want to check it out, but long story short, I got screwed. <laughs> I sold my Perfect Grade RX-70-2 Gundam in around early August to some random Joe on Instagram, and we negotiated on a price on how much he was going to pay. We had the paperwork laid out via PayPal invoice. Um, and then when I shipped the model kit out, it gave me the whole, like, spiel like oh your work's amazing it looks really cool and yeah my friend loves it never heard back from him after that it has been literally three months to this day and that man has not paid me back what he owes so my old philosophy when it comes to actually doing work and getting paid when it's done is completely out the window so for those future builders that want to sell their work get paid up front negotiate on what the price is going to be for the Gundam, make sure the client is responsible for actually paying for the paints and supplies for this Gundam, but most importantly, do your due diligence and research the dude and do that, that you're selling your work to, because I got screwed, and I would hate to see it happen to anyone else that I know in the Gundam community, but that's a life lesson, and, and I'm learning it the hard way, and I guess that's another reason why I'm building this Gundam is because I lost a little bit of part of myself to someone that stole my work. And I felt that I needed to bring something back. And this was something that was really refreshing for me to do. But that's it, man. If you're gonna do something, never do it for free.
And like that, dudes and dudes, that's all the time I have. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you guys so much for the new subscribers. And I will see you dudes and dudes on the next video. Later.